everyone. Welcome to this edition to On the Table. This is going to be a special edition today. We're going to do a 4th of July burger like you've never done before. I want you to impress your friends with this. So what we're going to do is quickly load up here and uh, drive on back to the grill and start grilling up some burgers that you're going to really, really impress your friends with. Let's head to the grill, everyone. All right, we're here at the grill. What we're going to do for this 4th of July is just make the most insane burger that your friends have ever had. Most of the time when I go to a 4th of July party, what I usually have is a little teeny burger that usually is already patted, already bought, which aren't bad. I mean, those are good burgers to have, but I'm kind of one of those people. I want to really in, not impress my friends, but I want them to really enjoy something new that they've never had. So I want to give you guys that same option. What we're going to do today is we're going to make a burger. Now there's different ways you could do it. Now what I like to do is take a grinder, maybe get some filet mignon, just buy a little fat that you can get from the butcher, grind that in because the filet is going to be way too, you'll just dry out your burger because it doesn't have enough fat in it to make it juicy. So you want to definitely mix some fat in it if you're going to grind your own burger. Um, but what we've done today is we've just got a already ground burger meat from the store. And I want to make this quick and easy because you don't want to spend your whole time prepping for 4th of July. You want to go out, have fun with your friends, toss the horseshoes around, do whatever you do for 4th of July. So what we have here is we have ground meat. And what I'm going to do, just put that in a bowl. So a lot of times people just a little salt and pepper. I like to do a little salt and pepper, but I add a little bit of Worcestershire to that as well. So I'm going to salt. pepper little Worcestershire and then what I like to do is a little bit of rosemary fresh rosemary you don't want to add too much rosemary because you'll overpower the meat and that's all you'll taste so you just want to do a little pinch. I have a pound of meat right here. So you'll see that I'm just doing just a pinch. So we're going to take that and mix that up. Now here's the secret to everything. What I like to do, and you could do this if you do the filet mignon as well. Take a little bit of basil, which I have here. Add a little bit more of that rosemary. I'm going to just chop up my basil. Then I'm going to take this basil, I'm going to put it in here and mix this with a little bit of butter. Take a little of that rosemary, take a little fresh cracked pepper, and then what I'm going to do is mix that all up. This is what really makes it good. A little bit extra fat to it, but it's 4th of July. Something that you could have, you could splurge as a special day. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take a little bit of my burger meat. I'm going to patty that. And what I'm going to do is just make a little bit of a well here. Take a little of that butter. Put it right there. I'm going to make another patty. Now what you can do too, is when you mix your meat a little bit, just take a small little piece, put it in a frying pan and just taste it. That way you're going to know what it tastes like when you're done. Alright, so what I've done is i just taken that, pat that other patty, place that right on top of the butter, and then I'm going to patty this burger to together so it doesn't fall apart. There you go. Now you got the butter in the middle. Now what you could do, you could do this a day ahead. Um, the butter will harden inside that burger, which makes it even better. So it doesn't ooze out as quickly. It's going to slowly melt as that heat's starting to go through the burger. So this is something you could do a day ahead, which is always great. You could do your condiments a day ahead. And with this, before we put this burger on the grill, what I like is instead of just, here's some lettuce, tomato, 
um, an onion. What I like to do is do a little bit of blue cheese, a little applewood smoked bacon, tomatoes, avocados, thinly sliced onions, some mixed greens instead of just you know a piece of iceberg lettuce. All of this has really really good flavor um, and it gives your guess a little bit more of an option of what they like to put on their burger and says here's American cheese which American cheese of course you definitely want that um, you know and you could have different kind of cheeses anything you want but give your guests just a little bit more options and these are nice special options uh, with the avocado I just wanted to show you a little trick to um, a lot of people they try to dig out this seed they don't know how to get it out all you have to do is just slam it with a knife twist it and pull it out there you go okay what we're gonna do put the burgers on the grill now what you want to make sure is that your grill is hot just like our pan searing episode that we did we want to make sure the grill is the same way so we are going to make sure our grills hot I have a temperature gauge right here on front of my grill we're at about 425 degrees so that's plenty hot to take this burger throw it on now what you want to do, you don't want to instantly just start messing with this burger and start flipping around. You want to let this burger sit, get some nice grill marks, and then you'll flip it. So we're going to close the lid on this, let this cook for just a little bit, then we'll turn it in about five to eight minutes. Okay, we're going to take, take our burger now, check it. Okay, see how easy that moves without having to do anything to it. So that's why you want to let this sit. You can just release that burger a little bit as you can see how easy that it's moving around. If it is going to sit there and stick, just let it sit. And if you want to get those nice hash marks, those little cross marks that you have on a burger or on a steak, what you always see at the restaurants, all you have to do is just take it and move it a quarter turn and let it sit. And you'll get those diamonds on your burger which are really nice. So we're going to let that go just a little bit longer on that side. Then we'll flip it. We'll probably let this go another three minutes to get those diamonds on it and those hash marks. And then we'll flip that and then we'll be eating a nice delicious burger. Okay, so what we're going to do is put our burger together. What I like to do is put everything on the bottom. So when that burger goes on top, that heat's going to go through, make everything nice and soft. I'm going to do a little lettuce, a little onion, some tomato vine ripened tomato fresh out of our garden oh man you cannot beat that taste right there by itself I'm gonna do a little avocado a little bacon I put a little blue cheese on my burger you're not gonna be able to beat that so check our burger put it right on top mmm that's a good burger. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this 4th of July. Please be safe and stay tuned for more episodes of On the Table. I'm Chef Marcus Burek. Thanks for tuning in.